Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. One God, amen. Today, as we heard the miracle that our Lord Jesus Christ cast out the devil, and the people started to say, He is by the power of Beelzebub, the prince of demons, he cast out demons. And the Lord gave them the very logical answer that any house that is divided against itself, it will be deserted, it will not stand. So today I would like to speak about how we conquer the devil. Actually, in the Catholic epistle, if you pay the attention, the Lord gave us two commandments and two promises that were attached to these two commandments. So always with a promise, uh, always with a command comes a promise. So the first command, the Lord says, resist the devil in a definite manner. Nobody is exempted. We all have to resist him. But if I may ask why, it was very clear and obvious that all we have to resist. The reason is because he fights against us. We are in a constant battle with him. Either we like it or not, nobody is exempted. The devil fights against every and each one of us, even the little child. He fights against him. He teaches him to say no. The first word that the, 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 the children knows or learn to speak, they, their answer is always no, and so on. Nobody is exempted. And then Peter says, be, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He's like a roaring lion, walking, seeking to devour anyone that comes in his way as a prey. He is seeking. What should we do? He continued, resist him steadfast in the faith. So we have to resist the devil because knowing the spiritual battle, knowing their ways, as St. Paul, Paul says, for we are not ignorant of his schemes. So if we know his schemes, we will be able to resist. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood. It's a spiritual fight. We don't against fresh flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the spiritual wickedness, uh, the spiritual host of the uh, wickedness. The Bible informs us that devil is seeking to devour us. The Bible is telling us that we are in a constant battle with him, not to be scared and fearful, but rather to be watchful, to resist and to know how to resist. How should we resist devil? Number one, okay. number one, we have to armor ourselves. We have to be ready for the battle. Um, in in uh, the epistle of uh, St. Paul to the Ephesians, he says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We have to put on the whole armor, not only one piece of armor, the whole armor of God, everything. And he later on gave what kind of uh, uh, armors we should be armed with. But put on the whole armor of God and able to be ready. But you know what? If you try to put on the armor after the battle has started, it is too late. It is we have to put on the whole armor before the battle to be ready because you never know when he's going to attack. Number two, in terms of resistance, how far should we resist? Because sometimes we say, yani, we resist. Just according to what the Bible says. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 4, it says, In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of the bloodshed. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted till the point, to the point of the bloodshed. Lam tuqawimu hatta dam. This is how far should we resist? We tell him, Lord, I give you my uh, yani, promise. I'll do my best. I'll fight till the end. I will never surrender to him. Again, don't give him any place in you. Don't give him any place in you. 
um, book of Ephesians 4, 26 to 27 says, Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Never give him any place. If you give him an inch, he's going to take a foot. So never give him any place. Never entertain his thoughts or ideas. Have a control over your mind. As sin always starts in the mind. Can anybody tell me about any sin that does not start in the mind? Any sin we commit, any sin anybody commits, starts in the mind. So the devil always fights in the mind because he wants to, to, to win the battle in the mind first. Basically, if we lose or win the battle in the mind first, if we don't sin in mind, or we will never sin in action. So we sin here first. So be, be very careful. Don't entertain his thought. Don't let him in. Um, don't negotiate with him. There is a very nice verse. I love this verse. And it's in uh, one of the Psalms, Psalm 126. And the... Uh, uh, the 11th hour. Uh, in the 11th hour, it says, uh, at the end of the psalm, they shall not be ashamed when they speak their enemies in the gate. In the gates, if you speak to the enemy in the gate and don't let him in, you will never be ashamed. But if we let him in, if we start to entertain his thoughts, then the battle is lost. We will not be ashamed when they speak with their enemies in the gate. Um, that's why we have to strengthen our gates. We have to make it very strong. Um, in Psalm, the last psalm of the uh, compline prayer, it says, Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He strengthened the bars of your gates. If you have any store, and you, yeah, nowadays it's very important, we all put, or yeah, whoever have the stores, put a, a, an iron bars behind the doors to strengthen the doors and not the thief to come or enter yeah, easily. Strengthen the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. He makes peace in your borders. If your gates are strengthened, if your gates are strong, not easy to be uh, entered, your inner man will be at peace. Your borders will be at, at peace. Also, at the time of temptation, cry to God. Seek his help. Seek his power. David says in Psalm 27, Do not leave me, nor forsake me, O God of my salvation. We cry to him. Tell him, I'm, I'm so weak. Who am I to stand against the spiritual host of the wickedness? Who am I to stand before the principalities, principalities of, of, the, of, of darkness? I cannot, I cannot stand them. So please, God, do not leave me nor forsake me, O God, my, O my salvation. Do not deliver me to the hand of my enemies. Also, David says, لا تسلمني إلى أيدي أعدائي. Do not deliver me to the hand of my enemies. And finally, come near to God and he will come near to you. It is very important to come near to him because if you distance yourself from him, you will have no power over the adversary, over the devil. And the Bible says today, like in the Catholic epistle as well, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. We come near to him through prayers and through many things, but ultimately we come near to him through repentance. Repentance brings us near to the Lord. The parable of the prodigal son. Repentance is okay, quite That's fine. Repentance brought the prodigal son near to his father. When he um, he arose and came to his father, he started to, to to come near to his father. But when he was still a great way off. His father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Come near to God by one step. He will come near to you by thousand steps. So repentance always brings us near to the Lord. So come near to him and he will come near to you. This is the same principles in the Old Testament. In the book of Zechariah, um, chapter 1, verse 3, 
the Lord says in the old, return to me and I will return to you. That was the covenant of the Old Testament. Return to me and I will return to you. In the New Testament, he says, come near to me and I'll come near to you. In the book of James chapter 4, it is the same principle. He is the same God. It is the same way if you need victory is to come near to him. So to resist, and we knew many ways how to resist, and ultimately is to let, never let him, uh, never entertain his thoughts, to speak to your enemy at the gates, and you strengthen the bars of your, of your gates. Come near to God, for he is not far from each one of us. St. Paul says in the book of Acts, he means God, he is not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our beings. Come near to him, and he will come near to you. As I said in the beginning, he gave two commandments that are attached to two promises. Resist the devil, that is the command, and he will free from you, this is the promise. Come near to God, this is the command, and he will come near to you, this is the promise. So he gave us the promise, when you resist him, but the way that we discussed, not just like merely, we say we resist the devil. When you resist him till the end, to the point of the bloodshed, the devil will flee from you. That's the promise of the Lord. The reason is, the devil knows the power which the Holy Spirit grants us when we resist and never surrender, so he flees. He realizes the power that is in us when we resist and sur surrender. Pope Shenouda says a very nice saying, said, إن مقاومتك للشيطان تدل على رفضك له وهذا الرفض يجعل النعمة تتقدم إليك وتقودك إلى النصرة When you resist the devil this resistance shows that you are not accepting his thoughts and this rejection will let the grace come near to you and grant you, grant you victory Listen to what Saint uh, John the Beloved says to encourage every one of us. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Why? Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. He who is in you, the Holy Spirit of God, who dwells in you, is greater than he, the devil, who is in the world. So resist him steadfast in the faith and never be scared of him at the time of victory when God grant us victory we have to give thanks to the Lord because it's not by our own power that we overcame him listen to what David says when he uh, were victorious over many spiritual uh, fights um, <coughs> he says blessed be the Lord who has not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our souls has escaped as a bird from the snares. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us as a prey to their teeth. Mubarak al-Rabb al-lazi lam yusallimna farisa li asnanahum. Without his power, we would have been easy prey for the devil and will be completely destroyed. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, Psalm 125. So yes, we have to resist till the end, but we have to rely totally on his power because if you don't resist, his power will not be granted to you. He cannot grant his power to those who are lazy. There is a very nice verse. I would like to uh, end with this. It's in the book of Proverbs chapter 21 verse 31 it says the horse is prepared for the day of the battle but deliverance is of is from the Lord the horse is prepared for the day of the battle this is my duty this is my spiritual struggle I have to be prepared by putting on the whole armor of God and resisting and and all these things but if you do all these things but the, the, Lord, the, the Lord does not give you deliverance it won't happen so both works together parallel to each other the horse is prepared for the day of the battle but victory comes from from 
the Lord. Glory be to God forever and ever.